Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another musical review. As you well know, if you are familiar with my love of all things Monty Python, uh, I actually got to tick off one thing from my bucket list and it was this. Ah, fangirls glee! Woo! But, uh, <laughs> needless to say, um, only Eric Idle from the original cast was involved. He played the voice of God and he played a nun. None of the original cast other than Idle were involved, but despite that, I really didn't care one whit. I personally felt that the cast was just sensational. They were spectacular. All the different musical numbers were just unbelievably done. The choreography was just <laughs> spellbinding. I literally had my mouth agape half the time. Well, most of the time I was laughing my end off. <laughs> um, they made references to Straight No Chaser, which I thought was really cool. They made references to IU unfortunately losing um, to have any chance at Sweet 16, which is a real bummer for an IU fan like myself, but hey, you know, there are other teams I'll be cheering for during the Sweet 16 anyway, like I usually do. Um, I just thought it was really interesting and nice that uh, these actors from Phoenix knew a little bit about the culture here, so they used that reference and just subtly slipped it in, and it was very well done. And I have to say, I knew all the songs, I knew all the lyrics, all the lines. I can actually look at the playbill, and I can tell you where the songs originally come from. Let me find the actual scenes and musical numbers, Act 1. Um, Nice of the Round Table is from the uh, the original uh, Monty Python Quest for Holy Grail, and um, of course the other song that comes from that is Brave Sir Robin, uh, and if the Knights. Well, not the excuse me, not the knights, but the monks when they come in and they slap their heads with the the holy book that also comes from <clears throat> the original uh, movie if you've seen it, and uh, the second part has songs from the life of Brian. Well, no, 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 it's actually Where uh, where Are You comes from um, <laughs> Quest for the Holy Grail, excuse me. Now, what comes from um, Life of Brian is Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. But uh, I really thought that this was the funniest thing that I've seen in a good long while. Um, it was absolutely hysterical. Everything in this was just perfect. There was no scene that I didn't find just absolutely laugh out loud riotous. And being a Monty Python uh, geek that I am, I just couldn't get over how uh, remarkably done this was. And they actually had some audience participation at the end. They always sing Always Look at the Bright Side of Life, which I really love. And it's a, a great uh, ending for the whole uh, musical. And in true Python fashion, it's it's very random. And a lot of the humor is based on puns. And um, if you know anything about history, it's also based on that and uh, uh, stereotypes. So. If this is your kind of humor, it's right up your alley. And it's zany. It, it's just funny, funny, funny stuff. Now, um, I was very happy to hear the voice of Eric Idle. I just, I felt like, ah, it's my idol. <laughs> Get it? Idle? He! Sorry. Bad pun. But anyways, I really felt that 
everything that was portrayed. They they just really deserve all the kudos that they could possibly get. And I I give Spam a lot five stars, two thumbs way up because I laughed so hard that I first of all I broke a sweat, second of all I coughed, and there was one part where excuse me I was I was laughing so much that I was literally in tears now that doesn't really happen to me that often particularly when I'm seeing something humorous like this and satirical with a lot of dry wit and sarcasm um, it's very very unlikely for you to find me laughing at humor that I know it's coming next I know what the punchline is and even though I do, and even though I am well aware of where the story is going, I still laugh because it's still funny and the comedy still works. Now, now that is hard to pull off. And any of you who are involved in um, stand-up, you know what I'm talking about. It is uh, getting your audience to laugh at the same joke um, again and also their delivery how how they deliver certain lines also packs more of a punch i think that's why it's called punchline um <laughs> there's a lot of um kind of vaudeville type humor or burlesque sort of the the slapstick that you'd be used to if you went to went to a a vaudeville comedy show. There's a lot of that, and I like that. I, I'm I'm a sort of a fan of you know old school stuff like that. It is good pure comedy at its most basic level, and if you're clever, you will get a lot of references to other films and other uh, Monty Python sort of things like uh, uh, I'm a Lumberjack. They they did a little bit of that in. Um, after I'm not dead, that's the reprise to I'm not dead yet. Um, <laughs> not dead. Fred comes back from the dead, basically, and follows them off to war. Um, there are so many parodies in this musical that it's ridiculous to name them all. Um, you just have to be really astute. You have to know musical theater, or you won't get it. It, it is just a riot. It is so funny. I would probably say uh, this is pro possibly, quite possibly, the most hysterical musical I have seen in a good long while. I still haven't seen producers, but you know Mel Gibson's near and dear to my heart, and he is another one of my favorite uh, comedians and writers and producers of all time. I practically worship him. Um, Eric Idle is. You know he's he's right up there too. He's he's uh, he's held in very high re regard in my eyes. And um, if of course if you're familiar with the plot of Monty Python and the Holy Grail, it's it's basically the the plot of that movie, um, done in a musical way. And uh, <laughs> I just I can't get over how many different costumes were used in this particular musical. I have never seen so many costume changes in my whole entire life, let alone um, use of uh, special effects and projection, um, use of props, and it was all just absolutely fantastic, and it was awesome. It truly was, and I'm still on a musical high, so I, I really recommend it if you're a fan of Monty Python. Uh, if you're not, if you really haven't been initiated into the the uh, wacky world of um, Eric Idle and and crew, then just give it a chance. You might you might actually enjoy it. Um, I I could honestly say, children, if they have the right kind of of upbringing for this sort of thing can probably go and, and see this 
there there are some things that are kind of adult about this show. Um, it, it's not well. A lot of things are innocuous, and they'll probably go over their heads. But um, excuse me, my computer was going to sleep. But anyways, uh, I really think that it's okay to to let kids go and see this. If they're a certain age, I would say seven to maybe teenage would be okay. Maybe better yet, keep uh, go let them see this when they're teenagers because when they're about seven or younger, they're still in that kind of impressionable age, and they might be they might go and repeat these things to <laughs> only God knows who, and that that would be very awkward. But um, it's just my um, assessment. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But if I were a parent, excuse me, that is what I would do. All in all, I, I just think that this is the best thing since um, sliced bread. And uh, we eat ham and <laughs> jam and spam a lot. I'm sorry, I just had to quote the musical a little bit. But it it really is a remarkable feat. And it's just funny 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 so that's basically all I have to say about Spamalot and the fact that it's just a whole lot of fun and I'm glad that I can tick that off of my um, my uh, <clears throat> bucket list because to be honest with you I feel extremely satisfied and I'm in in ultimate state of euphoria after having experienced this uh, marvel that is Python um, <laughs> and the humor of it too because I, I just love it and uh, I, I dressed appropriately for the occasion I wore uh, this has a uh, big band on it of course I had my scarf as usual just because it's cold but other than that I can say that it was a very um, entertaining and just fun-filled experience that I will not likely forget for a long time. And these songs are probably going to be bouncing around in my head for a good, 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 good long while. So whenever I have a bad day, that uh, always look on the bright side of life will, will come and just lift me up out of the doldrums and I think that's what's really important about that because it it just proves that humor is such a force in this world and it truly does make things better because humor is the best medicine like my mom taught me it truly truly is and it will keep you young it will keep you um, healthy and it is something that we can all understand, I think, and that, that's what makes uh, Python such a uh, tremendous phenomenon, I believe. So, uh, just think about that for a while, will you? <laughs> and um, I shall see you next time. So, until then, ciao! <laughs>